Gallery. Have you heard of them? Probably not. I hadn't until they reached out to me and offered to send a bunch of their products for me to test. So over the course of the last few weeks and months, I've been testing their airbrush products in my studio. I'm going to be giving you an honest review of what I think, what I like, what I dislike, and what might work for you and your painting needs. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Darren, this is DJB Studios. I am a professional model horse artist and I've been airbrushing since 2017. Model horse customizing takes a lot of finesse, a lot of detail, and because of that, I need my airbrushes to perform. So I've been running these same two airbrushes since I started my airbrushing journey. The Eclipse runs for around $200 and the Micron runs around $600. That's a large price gap and a large price point. That's where I think Gallery might be a good option for you. So Gallery is a relatively new airbrush company and they're predominantly based on Amazon. So you can get that through the amazon.com and amazon.ca website, which makes it really easy to order. You can save on shipping, all that Amazon jazz. They also have a large selection of their replacement supplies available on their Amazon store. So that's super helpful too because everything is accessible it's easy to find, easy to get, so they want you to have the good quality airbrush experience at a low budget price. And I think that's great. I think they're doing a really good job of that. And I would say that the airbrushes perform as expected to the price point that they are offering them. The biggest thing that is new to Gallery is their nozzle. So they've created this unique nozzle system. Nozzle cap detaches from the airbrush as normal, and then the actual nozzle itself is seated inside of that nozzle cap and it has a self-centering function. So you should just be able to drop it into the cap, screw it on, and you're ready to spray. It has little grooves on the outside of it, and this is supposedly to help airflow get to the tip of the airbrush so that you have more air pressure to work with. And the idea is that you do not need a nozzle wrench when taking apart and cleaning the airbrush. So that reduces damage, that reduces frustration, and the part itself is not as small. For example, my Iwata Eclipse has a pressure set nozzle in it. So it's this gold piece with the really tiny nozzle tip attached to the other end of it. You can remove that nozzle tip, though it's not recommended by Iwata. The piece itself is fairly easy to deal with because it's large. However, the tip of it is very fragile and it's very easy to crush that, damage that uh, in your painting process, cleaning process of the airbrush. Now, if we go to my Iwata Micron, which is a very expensive brush, and if we damage this nozzle, it could cost us $80 to replace the tip on its own. We have to take Iwata specific nozzle wrench and we have to carefully insert that wrench onto the tip and twist it off and this <laughs> is very fragile and very 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 small in comparison to the gallery tip it's significant my micron is running at the 0.23 millimeter size needle so that nozzle is going to be exponentially as small so you can see when we compare all of these nozzles together the gallery one is quite a bit bigger than the micron and then the eclipse same thing so there's a less fragileness to the tip of the gallery. And if you're new to working with airbrushes, this could be really beneficial for you because you have less risk of smashing it up and it's easier to hopefully pop out. My concern with this is that it might, over time, if it gets really gummed up with paint in some way, it might be kind of hard to get that drop set nozzle out of the nozzle cap. Another feature they've implemented to all of their airbrushes, even the beginner airbrushes, is that twistable paint gauge on the back. When you twist that little piece on the end, that allows you to control the amount of paint that you want to exit the airbrush. They're also really smart in including a quick release system on all of their brushes. I personally do work with a quick release set in my studio. I'm popping back and forth between my two airbrushes and I only have one hose. All of their airbrushes are also dual action and that means that the trigger itself is dual action. So you're able to push down for air pressure and pull back for paint. That allows you to have the utmost amount of control while you're painting. Quite a few models of their airbrushes come with interchangeable needle sets. So this is a thing that you can invest in in certain types of airbrushes where you can get a new nozzle and a new needle 
needle size to interchange on the same body of the airbrush. So with some of these kits, you're getting a 0.35 millimeter needle and a 0.5 millimeter needle. 0.5 is gonna give you a wider, larger spray. You can use that for thicker paints, paints with glitter properties. 0.35 is more for detail works. So that's really awesome because that allows you to have basically a two-in-one feature to your airbrush. Some of their kits also come with a moisture trap that you can screw onto the end of the airbrush. And all of the boxes come with extra o-ring. The box has a lovely diagram diagram on the inside as well, which allows you to see all of the parts, the names of the parts, and how to reassemble the airbrush in case you take it apart and get stuck. A lot of their brushes have removable paint cups, and so that allows you to have different sizes depending on the quantity of paint you're needing. It also supposedly helps with cleaning because you're able to remove that cup entirely. So what I have noticed with the gallery airbrushes versus my Iwata airbrushes is that they are a little bit harder to clean and a little more time to change paints. And that's because that is a twist off cap that makes the needle and like the spot where the paint kind of pools and like causes problems to be quite deep set into the airbrush. So it's hard to get a brush in there to clean and scrub and get like the paint that could be gummed up in that area. Uh, a lot more than on, say, my Iwata brushes. So I was finding changing colors with the gallery one was a little more time consuming than the Iwata one. A lot of these gallery airbrushes, I will say the one thing I noticed is that the tip itself slightly poked out of the nozzle cap. And I think if you were to drop that on that, it would not be so good. I will say that Gallery has been incredible in this process of creating this video. Their customer service has been next level. And we all know how frustrating it can be when customer service is less than ideal or less than communicative. They've always been really responsive, really quick. And I think if you were to have any problems or concerns emailing their support team, you will get a response. So I'm always game for promoting companies that care about their products, care about their customers, and are making an effort to be better than say, some of those larger brands that aren't really considering the customer in mind. So they have sent me four of their airbrushes here. They've sent me two of the advanced ones and then two of the ones that come with the beginner's kind of kit. They have sent me two air compressors. They've sent me their paints and everything comes with that really great color wheel there in the front. So, so they sent me two of their compressors. So I tested both of these rigorously and I disliked both of them. So that takes a while to fill up. So I'm not sure about this one. Um, it's already like getting quite warm and pressure wise, it's not holding the pressure. If you are familiar with my channel and if you're not, I have a couple videos on air compressors themselves and I've done a ton of research into air compressors and what you need for your painting setup. And so I've actually converted my studio to include a shop compressor. Some of my models are quite large, like this is quite a bit of surface area to be painting on. If you're painting miniatures and smaller models, then you're probably okay. They only reach a maximum PSI of around 30. And that's not quite heavy enough for me on certain cases. I like to spray at a higher PSI. I actually found that like two of them were faulty out of box, so I was not impressed by them. And I told Gallery that, and they understand that their market might not necessarily be me. So if you're interested in like model horses and painting traditional briars, probably not those compressors. I will say that I have the little ambition one, the little purple one. And I have that under my desk and I do actually use that in my studio now. If I just need like a quick spray of something or a really quick little like touch up, I'll turn that one on because it's less intense and invasive as my large scale compressor. The kits themselves are at a very decent price point and they come with everything you need. They thought of everything. You get this really great color wheel, comes with a full set of paints with a airbrush thinner and an airbrush cleaner, cleaning pot, cleaning brushes, and a cleaning needle as well as not one but two airbrush hoses. It comes with two factory default airbrushes that are decent quality as well. Price is kind of right. So if you're going to go for like a full kit, I would say these gallery kits are pretty decent. I'd probably avoid that dual drive compressor. I don't think those will last a super long time. The Ambition one though, 
I think it'll be okay. So depending on the scale or the size at which you're painting really matters. Across the board, I think my biggest complaint about these brushes is that they're not entirely smooth. And what I mean by that is the triggers, like you can hear them. They kind of have a grindiness to them. They feel like they pop in a little bit. These are fresh out of the box. Some of these I haven't even used. And I find with my Eclipse, things are like really smooth, even when it's like gummed up with paint and the Micron is even smoother. It's really hard for me to transition to a lower quality brush that just doesn't have that smoothness in the trigger because that actually does lead to issues in the painting process. And I'm going to show you how these guys perform and spray and you'll see that the, the trigger action is a big contributor into the level of smoothness and detail you can get into your paintwork. So I have three of their airbrushes to review. I have one from their Advanced series, their Ace series, and their Premier series. The Advanced GHAD 68. So it comes with a 0.38 millimeter needle and a 0. 5 millimeter needle that you can interchange and this is actually a really unique brush because it has the trigger action which is different from your typical finger trigger and it has this big plasticky handle that I complained to gallery that it was very loose when I got it like it rattled like this I was like, there's no way this is like, this feels cheap. It's falling out of my hand. I figured out that there's like a little screw on the bottom that you just have to tighten and then it's all good. So apologies to gallery for that. Kind of interesting. It's a little more ergonomic, I think in certain ways for base coating and stuff. If you're spraying like a lot and for a long time, I think this would be an okay brush. I threw the 0.5 needle in there and it was spraying really well with the thicker paints and the glitter based paints so it did a it did a decent job this is not a detail brush you're not gonna get like little tiny eyeballs out of this you're gonna get like basic structure maybe basic shading and i find out of all of them this one is definitely the cheapest feeling it doesn't feel as solid and the price point for this airbrush is 70 dollars you can get the one with the regular trigger handle which is the ghad 39 for 45 dollars that would come in very similar to this classic one that came in the kit i think it would be very similar you get what you pay for for 45 dollars affordable but you're not going to get high quality detail and you might fight with this a little more than say some of these better models that exist on the market. Then they sent me the A series, which is like one of their higher end models, and this is designed for more details. Comes with a 0.35 and 0.5 needle set that you can interchange. Found with this one, it produced a lot of air pressure and it was kind of creating some issues. It was hard to control the paint. I think this brush gets the job done. I think it's comparable to the Eclipse and we're at a closer to $100 price point on this guy versus the $200 Eclipse. Once again, not as smooth in the trigger, better than the classic ones, but not as smooth as the Eclipse. So it's not as high quality, but I think this would get you by. Then recently, they also sent me their updated Premiere series, which is the Mobius 0.3 Premium. It's very fancy. This is a very attractive airbrush. I really like the twist. This trigger feels a lot smoother. This is only a 0.3 millimeter needle, so they're all kind of the same. This Mobius only has a 0.3 needle in it, so it's a little bit smaller, but I wasn't able to get nearly the detail out of it as compared to the Micron, so it's not quite at that caliber. It is retailing at $65, and there's a 0.2 millimeter version, which would be closer to my Micron in the size of the needle, and that one is retailing at $75. So you can choose how fine you want to get with your spraying. The Ace series is closer to 100, whereas this one's like 65, so. I was pleasantly surprised by this airbrush. 
So for all of these airbrushes, I tested a different shade of green using a golden high flow acrylic paint. This is a paint designed directly to pop into the airbrush. For my second test panel, I used the Vallejo Model Air. This paint is slightly thicker. Not always great, just throwing it right into the airbrush. Sometimes it causes problems, clogs, the airbrush can't handle it. And then I used the gallery paint, which is the paint that came in the airbrushing kit. And this was actually, I was quite surprised by it. It was pretty decent. I haven't done a ton of testing with their paints, so I can't really say that they're good or bad, but it seemed to flow through the airbrush really nicely. I'm also switching back and forth between a 50 PSI and 30 PSI out of different compressors so that you can see the different ways that different air also affects the paint and the brush itself. Starting with the classic airbrush, the golden paint, this did pretty good, but like the sticky trigger starting it out was causing some problems and I was finding that the golden wasn't really flowing through it super great. Adding the Vallejo paint, I didn't like that as much. It was sputtering a little bit, creating a fairly soft teal, but definitely not as soft as the golden. I found when I reduced the pressure, it did a lot better on the 30 PSI. The gallery paint, it did pretty good. We had a few moments of oversaturation, so there was some issues with too much paint coming through because that trigger, same thing, just like it being a little bit sticky, it's hard to control and then you end up pushing too much paint out and causing some spatters. And there was some inconsistencies in the line. This brush definitely performs as expected, nothing fancy. Going into the advanced trigger airbrush here, the trigger makes it really hard to control the spray. Did all of these tests at 50 PSI. It performed all of these paints fairly well. The spray itself was not super smooth though. It, it did an okay job, but not the most uniform spray. Like you can definitely see the particles of paint. This had the 0.5 needle in it though, so that may have been part of the issue, but I wouldn't use this brush for detailing of any kind. I think it would not be able to handle that at all. And it really disliked the gallery paint. It was really pushing too much of this paint out. So the Ace here, out of the gate, fairly uniform spray, but it definitely was too much pressure with the 50 PSI and the golden paint. It was really wanting to put too much of this paint down, and this is quite a thin paint, so I'm not surprised by that. This actually handled the Vallejo paint a lot better, but on the 30 PSI, it wasn't like not enough pressure to kind of push that out. And I found it did almost the best with the gallery, but there's a little bit of sputtering for sure. All in all, this brush worked okay, but not perfect. Now the Mobius did pretty good. It had a pretty uniform spray, a little more pigment with the golden. It was kind of pushing out quite a few particles, a little bit of spattering, a little bit of too much paint happening. It seemed to do better with the lesser pressure. With the Vallejo paint, it was pushing too much of this out for sure. Less than ideal lines, but pretty smooth for the larger faded shading, so it, it handled that paint pretty well. And it did a good job with the gallery. There's a little bit of sputtering though still.
Now when we jump to the eclipse, we can see that these lines are just a lot smoother, a lot more uniform. So you really see the quality of the airbrush. My eclipse seems to be skipping a little bit, so I think it might have a clog or something in it because it was breaking its lines a little bit, but it handled the golden really nicely. The Vallejo was a bit labored, did okay with the lower PSI. And gallery paint it did pretty good a little bit of splattering in there and a few skipped steps but pretty good overall and the micron you can really see the level of detail at which you can get you can get that really fine line it likes this golden paint quite a bit Vallejo uh, is a bit too thick for it. It does labor a little bit on that, but you can still create pretty decent lines. You just have to be cleaning it a lot because it would be clogging. And I've actually really liked this gallery paint. I personally think all of these tests turned out really good. I would say the Iwatas definitely are the top performers. Premier Mobius is the best bang for your buck. Price is great right, and the performance was pretty decent, but the A-series was not too bad. All in all, I think if you're starting out in airbrushing, you don't want to spend a bunch of money. These airbrushes are a great option. Like I said, you can get all of the extra spare parts you need. The customer service is really great and they're really solid. They feel good. They've put care into the design. They've added features that you wouldn't normally get on other brands of brushes for that same price point. And I would say that if you're looking for the utmost control and precision, go Iwata. <laughs> Um, but that's just, that's just my personal experience. So my conclusion to all of this is that I think Gallery is a really great brand. These airbrushes offer a really competitive price point and I think you'll be happy with your purchases if you do go this route. I will say that these are not replacing my Wada brushes at all in my painting process. For model purses, I just need a high level of detail. I also wanna say that the tool doesn't make the art, it only makes the art faster. So you're not gonna like get a $600 airbrush and be able to paint better because you have a $600 airbrush. It's only gonna make your process easier, faster, more streamlined. $45 all you can afford, $65 all you can afford to get a gallery airbrush. Learn how to paint really well with that gallery airbrush and I think it will take you to places you've never dreamed of and then you can advance to the more expensive once you're ready. But I started with basic art supplies and over time have graduated to professional grade stuff and I wouldn't say that the professional grade has made me a better artist, it just makes me an easier artist, sometimes less work. <laughs> the airbrush itself is not going to save you, airbrushing is exhausting and finicky and frustrating. But overall I think Gallery's done a really great job with these brushes. If I was starting out this is a route I probably would have gone honestly. So I'm happy that I get to be a part of this and if you have any further questions feel free to leave a comment below you can always reach out through email and you can always reach out to gallery themselves because they're really awesome at replying a big thank you to gallery for making this video happen so all of those links are in the description below those links do help support this channel because I do earn a small commission if you click on them be sure to like this video subscribe to this channel so that I can offer you more airbrushing content thank you so much for watching happy airbrushing <laughs>